Welcome to assignment of week 5. Welcome to the Vignette cipher. You already learned about the Caesar cipher in week 3. And the Vignette cipher is just a little bit more complex. You do not just have one shift with which fits all, but you do have a keyword. Yeah, in here it is random and this keyword is repeated again and again and each letter of the keyword in here for example the R is translated into its position within the alphabet here it is 17 and this 17 is then taken as a shift for the corresponding character the P uh, which then becomes a G in our secret text. Yeah. To make it a little bit more easy we do have an A. The A is in position 0 yeah? so the shift is 0 and so the Y becomes shifted 0 positions and it is uh, yeah, again a Y. As this week's task is a little bit more complex we would like you to split up the program into functions. The first one is encrypt letter which means you have as an input the letter from the clear text P and we, we have an integer the shift and then you calculate this new letter from the secret text in this case which would be G. To be able to use these encrypt letter functions you have to know this number of shifts and this is calculated in this function calculate shifts. Yeah, so you get um, a letter from the keyword, for example R, and you should generate the 17 out of it. And finally you have to implement a function encrypt text, which gets uh, as an input both the clear text and the keyword, and of course it has now to iterate over the clear text, uh, calculate the shifts, produce um, then the secret character for each um, clear text character and append it to our new secret text. Let's first have a look on the function encrypt letter. Actually this function is quite similar to a part of the program we have had in the bonus task in week 3 but let's quickly go through it. We do have two parameters First it's the letter, the one we would like to exchange by another letter. And then we have the shift, which is an integer and defines the distance, how far we would like to shift. Again, we have the alphabet, the ABC as a string, uh, starting from A going to Z, only um, having a small letter um, characters. And in the first step, we define the index. So using the method index we do find out which index we do have for our search letter. For example A would uh, have index 0 because it's on position 0, it has the index 0 and that would have the index 25. And then we assign a new value to index and this is exactly our initial value, our initial index plus the shift and that modulo 26. Why do we need this modulo 26? If we, let's say, reach a number which is higher than 25, it's not part of our alphabet anymore, so we have to start um, working on scratch. If you do not understand this um, and need a more thorough explanation, have a look on the videos for bonus uh, task and week 3. Finally, we take our a ABC yeah, take our new index which is used as an index now and this is our secret letter and this is what re um, this function returns. Let's have a look if you define if you implement a function you should always test if it behaves as expected. So what can we do? We can make a print. Yeah? We run our encrypt letter function. Let's first hand over an A and the shift distance is 1, yeah, we get a B, yeah, so it's correctly moved. Uh, let's do it with a Z to check if the modulo works and we get an A. We can define a higher distance, let's say um, 25, uh, we get a Y. 
So it's not really ready right now. What happens if you, for example, enter um, exclamation mark? So why is this um, a function resulting in a value error? The problem is we have an exclamation mark and the exclamation mark is not part, part of our alphabet. So running this line of code, yeah, we simply run into an error. So what do we have to do? Before we run through this line, we first have to check if our letter is, if our character is actually a letter. Yeah, so what could we do? We have described it in here. We have this is alpha method, which we can use on our letter. So if letter dot is alpha, and only then we say we would like to run through this um, part of the program. And if not, in the else case, you know, what do we say? We say the secret letter actually is the same as our letter. Let's rerun our program and you see if we enter an exclamation mark, it's still the same. What happens to a, let's say, white space, it's a white space. What happens to our A? It becomes a Z. So now it seems to work. Let's have a look on our next function, which is calculate shifts. Actually, this is quite easy. Again, we use our alphabet and for each letter we hand in as parameter, we try to found, find the index, which later on is used as a shift. Is it necessary to really define such a short function? Yes, sometimes it's simply better to have a function, even if it is a short one, which then uh, using the name <coughs> Yes, sometimes it's better to have a short function, even if it consists just of two real lines, simply because the name of the function tells you what really happens in here. Again, let's check if it works. So we can do print calculate shifts. And let's say we enter an A. Yeah. This should result in a zero. Uh, let's give another one. It's 17. And if we go for the Z, it's a 25. Seems to work. Our final function is encrypt text. We do get two parameters, namely the text to be encrypted and our keyword, which is necessary for the Wiener sh chiffre. At the beginning, we both turn this text and the keyword into their lowercase equivalents. And then we need an encrypted text, which is an empty string at the very beginning. The whole ciphering mechanism is then implemented by a for loop, which runs over the length of the text, which runs over the text. And you see, I have a parameter, parameter i, which I can use actually as the index. In the later part, you will use our encrypted encrypt letter function. And you can see we enter as a first parameter, one uh, character, one letter after the other of our text, of our text we would like to encrypt. And the second part, is a shift. So how do we get this shift? We have our key letter, which we have to um, to find out. It's the keyword, yeah. And then we have i, so the number of these um, where we are in our text, which we have to use a modulo um, with the length of the keyword. So if you have, for example, this random keyword, let's go uh, in here. Yeah, it consists of six letters. So if we have, if we are, let's say, higher than six or higher than five, actually, then we would like to start counting again with zero, one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And to achieve this always setting back to zero, that's why we have to use this I modulo length of the keyword. 
And here we do get back an encrypted text. So let's give it a try. Yeah, so I can run encrypt, oh, sorry, print encrypt text, for example, the word Python. Yeah, and I would like to use a keyword. Let's take the keyword A, yeah, which means this uh, Python is simply um, the same because A returns in a zero always. Uh, let's look at a more complicated one. Let's say B A, then every or A B, then every second um, letter is the same. So the P and the T and the O, and these are all the same. All others have been shifted. Now let's take something more complicated. Um, X Z D, yeah, and you see it still works. Finally, all three functions which are, are required to solve this task are implemented. So we just need our main programming. And this consists just of three statements. The first two ones are, are used to get an input by the user using this input function. And uh, here we assign values. Here we assign the, the text to be encrypted to the variable text and our keyword to the variable keyword. And then we run the function, we call the function encrypt text with the two parameters and hand over the result, the return value to the print function. Let's give it a try. Uh, take our example text. Python is really beautiful. And uh, use this keyword random. And you can see, uh, just have a look on our encrypted solution. It looks the same as this one. So whole program looks fine. Another test, again, we take this uh, example string and now we use this A, uh, which always is an identity because A means it's a shift of uh, zero. Yeah, and you see it uh, just turns the text into lower string in lo to lower correct characters, but the rest is basically the same. So program seems to work fine. 